Yeah, uh, hi, I'm Dr. Kamuza Anchode. I'm is working as a managing director and also radiation oncologist working in is a Asian Mission Cancer Hospital and I'm consultant with Bangladesh Specialized Hospital in oncology departments. And presently, uh, uh, we had a one society which is called the Bangladesh Society for the Breast Cancer Studies. Uh, we have organized these societies in 2015, especially this is a platform to educate especially the residents, specialists and other peoples regarding the recent management of the breast cancer. And we, in the meantime, for the last six years, we did two international, three international conferences on breast cancer in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And uh, we uh, arranged two breast cancer preceptorship programs where 50 uh, residents or postgraduate doctors are trained in a group, especially like the small preceptorship programs. And the, for the last COVID, uh, period, especially the two years, we arrange a lot of webinars regarding the man management of the breast cancer, regarding from the pathology to the treatments and everything. So we are actually uh, arranging uh, how we can educate our people, especially regarding the recent management of the breast cancer. So our society is actually dedicated for that. And as you know, uh, breast cancer, we had a lot of uh, misconception regarding the breast cancer, in, especially in uh, local peoples in the villages. So we are trying to, we have made a documentary films, uh, especially on the breast cancer. The breast cancer doesn't mean is a, when, a, when you are attacked with the breast cancer, when we are diagnosed with breast cancer, you are not dying. Because everybody doesn't know actually the breast cancer scenarios has been changed for the last 40 years. So we are doing in, in this type of work. After working the hospitals, we had a big number of the, the uh, specialists, both uh, radiation, medical, surgical, oncologists, and palliative care, and also uh, the imaging specialists in this group, actually, and also other peoples like pharmaceutical peoples, also. That is about our society. Okay, it, it sounds uh, a very a very good work and a and a very important uh, thing to do because breast cancer is is a big problem everywhere in the world. Yeah. So there is, uh, as you said, misconceptions and. In, in our country, what has changed the landscape is the, the screening program introduced in the 90s. And now the, the cancer is, the, the problem with the cancer is the, the very small cancers. And in the past, it was big cancers. No? And that can make a difference from country to country if you have a screening program or not. No? Yeah, we don't have a breast cancer screening program, but we had a cervical cancer screen, screening program because we had a lot of uh, cases in the cervical. Cervical cancer is near about the topmost uh -huh. uh, in yeah. our, our countries. So we uh, gradually, gradually, there is, uh, we are uh, moving towards the breast cancer screening programs because we, we need, actually in Dhaka city is the capital, uh, we had a uh, early case especially, but in especially when we're going for uh, away from the capital, 300 kilometers away, uh, we are getting the advanced cases. If you see the picture of the hospital-based cancer registry, we doesn't have a population-based cancer registry like Spain and other countries, European countries. So hospital-based cancer registry shows, the, especially the breast cancer coming in advanced stages, stage two and three, is due, due to lack of the knowledge and other things. Even we can take, we can think about the facilities because we don't have a facilities in around uh, in the periphery of the uh, country. All are concentrated in the uh, cen center of the country, especially in the capital. So we had mm -hmm. a uh, near about uh, 30s or 25 cancer centers uh, or departments who are dealing with the cancer, but these are concentrated in the capital. So patients are not getting, especially in the outside the capital, uh, adequate treatments or they are coming diagnosing in the advanced stages. Yeah. Uh, that that's, uh, makes even more important this kind of treatments like uh, hormone therapy, yeah. with, uh, especially with food restaurant, because it's very convenient because just uh, once every month and, and and the compliance of the treatment because you, you can be sure that the patient received the treatment and it's yeah. very important. And uh, hormone or ER positive breast cancer is three quarter 
seventy percent of all of the, of the mm. cases. So, so mm. it's, it's very important to come there. Mm. At present, there are new treatments where are very expensive, and and the benefit are not for all. And, mm. and when we, we have to choose, I think that hormone therapy is very important. Yeah, that's that's really good actually. Especially in our country, we need uh, that type of treatments because patient cannot afford uh, cytotoxic therapies and other immunotherapies and other molecular therapies or molecular antibodies, especially. So if the patient gets uh, this type of very small uh, financial burden, especially the hormone treatments, it is very convenient. Even uh, they can they doesn't need to come every every month to the hospitals for the checkups and other things. Especially that's a very convenient things. And, and uh, regarding this hormone therapy, when we are especially in uh, residents or students in 19, there is a no receptor studies in our country. But now, it, nowadays, it's very uh, simple. Now it's, it's available in near about most of the uh, cities of the country, especially. Yeah, I, I think the hormone therapy is still uh, is still very important, and the other group is the the HER2 positive. But are, in, in our country, it's about 10% of the cases mm. just so. Yeah. Mm. And there's more, more expensive choices for this. Yeah, that's good. So uh, when, when I, I can start my presentation, just now or? I think it's a moderate is here, Dr. Yeah. Uh, Shumi. She's a plastic surgeon. I, I think she can come the case and she can start when we, you can start the lecture special. I think. Thank you, sir. And hello, Dr. Manuel. I'm plastic surgeon. I'm Dr. Shumi. I'm a member of BSPCS. Uh, today I am uh, playing uh, the role of moderator. And the time is already uh, 13, uh, 3 30. Uh, should we go for um, the um, uh, symposium on? Shumi, I think we can. Start because today is the uh, uh, World Cancer Day, so we can talk on it for a couple of minutes. Uh, Kamru Zamansar is here. Uh, it will not extend more than eight to ten minutes. After that, we can move on to our uh, faculty's lecture. So, yeah. Kamru Zamansar, if, if you agree, sir, we can start. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, we can talk, we can especially on the World Cancer Day for a couple of minutes. Then we'll move on to our main presentation. Over to you, Shumi. Thank you so much. Um, Assalamu alaikum and good uh, afternoon. Uh, this is uh, 4th February. Um, dear participant, uh, respected teacher, and faculties, uh, we all know according to the WHO on uh, the latest uh, report, there are around 1.5 million cancer patients in Bangladesh. And among uh, that, the breast cancer is leading, uh, second leading cause uh, now in our Bangladesh. So uh, there is always some um, uh, strategy, always some actions, and uh, always some uh, effect uh, to uh, uh, combat this breast cancer patient. And so uh, today, Breast Cancer Bangladesh Society for Breast Cancer Study uh, has arranged uh, this symposium on the special day of um, World Cancer Awareness Day. And we are uh, very happy that we have our panel of expert, uh, Professor Dr. Kambu Jiaman Chod, who is the uh, uh, general manager, uh, uh, who is the consultant oncologist, radiotherapist, Bangladesh Specialized uh, Hospital Limited and Managing Director of um, Asania Mission Cancer Hospital. And he is renowned oncologist in, uh, in pioneer role in Bangladesh. And uh, we have also panel of expert Dr. Mohamed Selim Reza, who is a senior consultant oncology square hospital limited. And uh, we, we have um, uh, Professor Dr. AFM Anwar Hussain, senior consultant surgical oncology, Asania Mission Cancer uh, and General Hospital. And uh, we have uh, international speaker along with us, Dr. Manuel Consentla, uh, who is Chief of Medical Oncology Services, University Teaching Hospital of Monticello, uh, Compego Hospital in the city of Vedra, Spain. And our, uh, he, he will uh, speak on hormone receptor positive breast cancer and uh, fulvar stent. Uh, we are uh, happy to uh, be uh, uh, to seeing the panelists and all the participants along with us. At first, I want to go to uh, Dr. Arunang Shudash uh, to 
uh, and request him to uh, say something about the perspective of cancer uh, patients in our Bangladesh and the present scenario, please. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shumi, for your kind introduction. Uh, today is 4th February. We all know that uh, today is World Cancer Day. And this year, uh, the theme of World Cancer Day is uh, very important for developing countries like Bangladesh, that is, close the care gap. Uh, it is a tough situation that in uh, developing country, there is a huge gap in the care. We all know, we all acknowledge that, but we have very limited resource to meet with that need. So from this year, UICC has developed a plan and a strategy to reduce this gap in the coming three years. So on behalf of Bangladesh Society for Breast Cancer Study, I'm inviting you all to today's webinar. So as a part of the awareness, we have chosen a particular area of care gap. And that particular area of care gap is knowledge gap. Since 2015, under the leadership of Professor Kamruja Manchodhuri, sir, Bangladesh Society for Breast Cancer Study was developed. I'm going to a bit history part. This society was developed to address this knowledge gap, which we are discussing today. This knowledge gap is a gap in evidence-based medicine. If we compare the treatment facilities and treatment protocols of the developing countries like Bangladesh, India, with the very developed countries like Spain, Germany, Singapore or America, we can see that there is a gap in the level of understanding and the practice of protocol among the practicing oncologists. So Kamru Jamasar first initiated this concept that this evidence have to be built up. If we can close this gap on evidence-based practice, definitely the level of practice will develop in countries like Bangladesh. So from 2015, our society started to work on this particular area. We mostly focus on breast cancer and we find that there is a huge difference in treatment. So uh, with the help of workshop, seminar, international conferences, we are trying to meet up this gap. We are trying to uh, develop the oncologist by contouring workshop, uh, breast cancer management protocol practice, and so many networking opportunities so that our young oncologists and practicing oncologists gain the advanced knowledge which is not available in our country. In this era of COVID, it came as a huge challenge for such conference networking and opportunities, but we never stop. We utilize this opportunity and we started webinar series for the young oncologists. We have done a huge series for uh, the development of oncologists. We have a couple of tumor boards with GCI, which is the Global uh, Cancer Institute. Uh, to develop uh, the practice of our oncologists. So I'll not take much time because today we have a, a faculty with us. He is going to teach us so many important things. Uh, I again go back to the motto of our society that is Bangladesh Society for Breast Cancer Studies. We are relentlessly working to meet up this gap in evidence-based practice. And this year, this new team is inspiring us to even work more harder and to reduce the gap and to establish an evidence-based breast cancer practice in Bangladesh. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Runangshu. It was very nice talk and we are all um, uh, concerned about the motto and we are so happy to uh, say that the Breast Cancer Bangladesh Society for Breast Cancer Study is doing excellent in this era. Uh, and uh, um, uh, and you uh, uh, and uh, now I want to uh, request Professor Dr. Kamru Jaman Chaudhuri sir to say something on this special day. Especially uh, uh, today is the fourth uh, uh, February, that is uh, uh, World Cancer Day. So we add we should do something especially to uh, start a uh, scientific programs where we can share. The, our our deficiency in our knowledge especially and also we can uh, we can have a lecture from a renowned oncologist like dr manuel where uh, our oncologists and also the junior and also the resident can uh, get benefits from uh, the uh, presentations and they can practice the standard guidance what they are using in europe and uh, especially in the european society actually so i'm really happy that dr manuel is with us and we'll hear uh, his lectures 
and definitely we um, definitely after that lectures we can have discuss uh, different issues regarding what we are doing here and what we can do in ne next years especially so um, thanks to uh, dr manuel especially for giving a times spending his uh, uh, very busy schedules uh, working schedules and giving a times to bangladesh society for the breast cancer studies that's all thank you uh, Thank you for the kind and for your kind introduction. And the topic today is the ER positive breast cancer and fast uh, forward strand. So let me share the screen if it works. Because yeah. Uh, I don't know what with uh, some difficulty with sharing the the uh, screen. Ah, uh, uh, okay. I'll try it again. Pardon me. Fourteen and. Uh, Yes, we can see your screen right now. Okay, and then I have to find, just find the presentation. Just to... <laughs> okay, it's now okay? Yes, perfectly all right. Okay. So, uh, as I said, it's uh, the full best one in the treatment of advanced breast, ca breast cancer. Uh, as you say, uh, breast cancer is the most frequent type of carcinoma and leading cause of cancer mortality in, in women. Uh, cancer-related mortality in women all over the world. Uh, it is true that incidence and even survival rates vary considerably among countries around the world, but that is different explanations as, as population structure, age, risk, race, lifestyle, environment, uh, in, maybe more important even disease stage of diagnosis, and also healthcare is mammography availability and the DSS of, of high quality care, of course. Uh, it is true also that the expression of the estrogen receptor ER and the progesterone receptor are used as pronostic factors in patients. And of course, for predicting the response both to adjuvant endocrine therapy and also to in advanced disease. Uh, so, uh, since the, the discovery of the estrogen receptor endocrine therapy is the main therapeutic uh, options for these patients, and ER positive breast cancer comprise approximately 70% of all breast cancer cases. Of course, the goals of this therapy is as every cancer, prolonged survival, maintaining the quality of life, and delaying as, as possible the decision of chemotherapy and other treatments because all these treatments are uh, quite expensive and sometimes very inconvenient. Um, but uh, despite the, the proven efficacy of the endocrine the therapy, everyone knows that all um, many cases develop resistance. And so uh, at the end, this is progression. Oh. And what is fulvestron? Uh, fulvestron is an estrogen receptor antagonist indicated for the treatment of locally advanced old metastatic breast cancer. It was discovered uh, 20 years ago and approved uh, 
already in, in 2000, the first approval was in 2002 as a monotherapy for the treatment of hormone receptor positive breast, metastatic breast cancer. And since then, it has been approved in many countries uh, worldwide and it's been tested now, even now as a combination drug with a number of different medicines and, and like cyclines and even new drugs like in HER2 positives, uh, ER positives like tucatinib, et cetera, for the treatment of women with advanced uh, breast cancer. So uh, it, it is to, to stress that even the, the drugs has been discovered 20 years ago, is still a drug that is um, even now in development for new indications and is still absolutely valid drug. It has a unique mode of action. It's different from tamoxifen and from aromatase inhibitors. And in, in the sense that degrades the estrogen receptor. Uh, and uh, it maintains the sensibility to estrogens, for example, in bone. Initially, the, the approved dose was 200 milligrams. And, but now the current approved dose is 100 milligrams. And with a loading dose uh, in the first month, also uh, in the approval said that it is the first three injections, but not everybody in real world is doing the, in the, in this. And we just, for example, we just have one loading dose in the first 14 days and then every 28 days. And uh, we'll talk later about the 250 and 500 milligrams. So um, the truth is that the landscape is nowadays is rapidly changing and there's some kind of confusion of, especially with the sequencing of the hormone therapy in breast cancer. Uh, as, as, as I said before, the fulvestrin is a, a, a receptor down regulator, and in this regard, is completely different than tamoxifen and the aromatase inhibitors. Recently, uh, the cycling dependent kinase uh, 4 and 6 inhibitors combined with endocrine therapy has been recommended in first and even second life on, in patients with ER positive negative breast cancer. But the truth is there, is there are still many patients who due to comorbidities, elderly, fragility, or in order to avoid the, an added toxicity for the CDK4-6 uh, inhibitors, and especially because they are very expensive drugs, could be suitable for receiving only hormone therapy in this scenario. And Sometimes you, you, you have the, the impression that the, the benefit of the cyclists is more dependent on the, on the hormone than even on the cyclists. So we are in, in some way a bit disappointed with the, with the uh, sound of the cycling uh, kinase, especially in the, with the toxicity. Well, uh, Fulvestre has been proved in, in every scenario, even in the adjuvant. Uh, that is before operation for them, for women with uh, ER positive breast cancer. And it, it's a, a ideal scenario to, to prove drugs in new adjuvant because you see the results immediately. And in, in the newest trial, they compare 500 milligrams to, with uh, 250 milligrams. And especially with the uh, expression of ER, PR, <coughs> KI K K is 67. In, in this study, it was uh, a great suppression of ER uh, seen with 500 milligrams. And that was the, the first evidence and the basis for uh, the greater biological activity for bus 500. But as we can see later, uh, one thing is biological activity, and another is clinical activity. And so even the biological activity is quite impressive. With 500, the clinical benefits with double doses is not so relevant. 
Uh, in practice, there are several phases in trial that have demonst demonstrated the efficacy and safety of fluvestrol as monotherapy or even in combination with other agents for the, the treatment of this kind of patient. One of them is the Falcon, the so called Falcon trial, it was an international trial that compared the efficacy of fluvestrol with an aromatase inhibitor, an astrosol in over 400 patients who had not received previously an endocrine therapy. And Fulbestran showed superior efficacy in terms of progression-free survival and then an astrosol, uh, three months uh, difference. And even um, what's important is similar rates of adverse events. So as, as the, the aforementioned uh, Falcon Fit trial that involved the women did not receive a previous endocrine therapy, uh, beyond the objective response, the so-called clinical benefit response was 78%, and more or less like with an astrosol. And, but the, the duration of clinical benefit was longer with full best run that when astrosol with a three months difference. At that time, the overall survival was not calculated. And the most frequent adverse event associated with the best run uh, was arthralgia and bone pain, hot flush, fatigue. And more or less is the same with uh, aromatase inhibitors. Uh, in, in first line, the, the so-called first study that was comparing endocrine therapy uh, with uh, for, for Vestran, it's an astrosol. In, in this case, in first line, the uh, the, the object response rate, uh, 36%, was similar to an astrosol. Also, the median duration of clinical benefit has not been reached at that time. Um, a subsequent follow-up analysis revealed a significant lower time to progression with fulbestran. And moreover, the overall survival was, was improved with fulbestran uh, in six months. So what we can see here is that fulbestran is superior to aromatase inhibitor, um, but not very much to, to the truth to be told. So another trials, uh, the, the comparison the efficacy in Fulvestran in 250 and 500 milligrams in over 700 uh, uh, postmenopausal women with uh, the, the confirmed study. And at that time in this trial, there are patients with 500 and 250 milligrams because at that time when the trial began, the, uh, the 500 milligrams was not uh, still standard. No? And in this trial, uh, a significant longer PFS was, was seen with 500 milligrams from a statistical point of view, but was just some one month. And the median overall survival was uh, three months difference from 22 to 26, respectively. So there is in, in a graphic way the, the, in the curves, uh, you, you can see uh, the difference uh, in, in survival and with an astrosol and full strand and with an astrosol alone. And from a statistical point of view, is that from a chemical point of view, the, 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 the difference is, is not so, so, so impressive, but in oncology, there are many curves like this, <laughs> we, have to, we have to say. And here you can see the median overall survival is six month difference from anastrozole and anastrozole and, and fulvestrin. And Every group was benefited, especially one thing, what is important to know with this kind of patient is that bone metastasis are the most benefit from this, from this uh, treatment. <clears throat> also the, the uh, patients uh, with late relapses 
what is very typical in nominal A cases, uh, more than 10 years. We have, we have seen relapses at 20 years and, and even more with, with the luminal A. And also previous endocrine therapy in adjuvant uh, appears to be important because the, the benefit is quite less if the patient has already received uh, a previous endocrine therapy that, that, that no. And we see if we put this together in a meta-analysis that has been performed with over 30,000 patients included, it is clear that in postmenopausal women with estrogen and progesterone or um, uh, receptor positive, fulvestra 500 milligrams show be better efficacy than aromatase inhibitor. And, but this different, has not been seen with full best than 200 milligrams. The, the results are more or less the same. If we uh, compare these to aromatase inhibitors full best from from time to progression free survival to also groups uh, in this patient, of course, with their ER positives and also with elderly people over 65. And at the moment, we cannot predict good patients may benefit from uh, diverse endocrine therapies. And it is clear, as we can have seen before in the graphic, that patients with bone disease and with late relapses benefit apparently more. But one thing that is important to know is that patients with visceral involvement show a significant differentiation in, P in PFS. And, and and that's important because it's a, a common view that when you have visceral disease, you need uh, chemotherapy. And that is not true, especially if visceral disease is not aggressive at the moment. Uh, we in Spain have performed a real world study with, uh, and also have seen that uh, visceral disease was not associated with, different, with, with uh, different efficacy. There's a real um, world data of Fogelstrand has been published by, by for us in, in two years ago. And it was a, a, an observational study involving 170 postmenopausal women. We are positive uh, from uh, six years, from 2011 to 2018 in Spanish hospital. And with a median follow-up of 31 months, the progression free survival with fulvestran was 14 months. No difference was seen in the visceral metastasis versus non-visceral metastatic subgroup for PFS. Overall response rate and clinical benefit were 35% and 82%. So uh, an overall survival 40, uh, 43 months. Um, so it is clear that patients that are in good performance status benefit most, but that it happens with every with every cancer. So uh, in real in real world uh, settings, the results are in in concordance with randomized clinical trials. And that is important because this uh, uh, frequently. Um, Critic that uh, one thing is the results that uh, we we get in a trial and, and then not always happen to the real patients. But it's in in this case, Fulvestrin continues to demonstrate a clinical benefit in real world and it appears well very well tolerated for postmenopausal when we are positive patients. Uh, I think that real war evidence is important. It's, imp it's an important step, especially for clinicians that see uh, real patients and not just in, in graphics uh, in, in PowerPoint, you know? So uh, at the moment, even 20 years after the first indication, research is continuing to evaluate the full potential of full Western in advanced breast cancer. Um, Another question is the overall survival. And overall survival is very difficult uh, to, to demonstrate with these hormone therapies. 
in part maybe because there, is, there are many uh, alternatives after the patient relapse well, to, to one drug, you can give another one, and there is a lot of crossover with these uh, treatments. Um, but uh, for best run, uh, at first line therapy, of course, can be recommended for patients postmenopausal with endocrine therapy. With uh, endocrine therapy, uh, the other option that is fulvestrin monotherapy could be uh, also a very good options, and I. Especially for patients who relapse after shortly after tamoxifen or adjuvant aromatase inhibitors, or who are endocrine naive, and also I have to say that is, I think, uh, uh, an issue of convenience because um, the difference when you give the, the two drugs together, as we have seen before are not very impressive. So uh, in practice, I favor to give uh, fulvestrin alone and not in combination with aromatase inhibitors because, especially because of the tolerance, the, the perceived tolerance with toxicity with uh, bone pain and joint pain. Uh, and of course, uh, fulvestrin is uh, at the moment uh, in, in every guy, important guideline, the American Society guideline, the MCCN, the European Society guidelines, in, in every guideline is recommended that the preferred treatment for hormone positive uh, metastatic breast cancer should be endocrine therapy in the majority of cases. Even in the present, in the presence of asymptomatic visceral metastasis, and that is very important not to uh, begin with uh, chemotherapy even if the visceral metastases are uh, asymptomatic. Endocrine therapy is the recommended uh, first option for patients who do not have aggressive disease. Um, and at the moment, there are, should be continued for up to three lines of therapy. And of course, in, uh, unless there are visceral crises of proof of endocrine resistance. And patients with rapidly progressing disease or visceral disease are candidates, of course, for chemotherapy. But even when you get stabilization of the disease, a good option is admi administer uh, fulvestrin uh, as a maintenance therapy after gaining control of the disease. <clears throat> so at the moment, fulvestrin is indicated officially as a monotherapy for the treatment of estrogen positive locally advanced or metastatic breast cancer in postmenopausal women that has not been previously treated with endocrine therapy or with disease relapse or after adjuvant in a, uh, with an estrogen therapy uh, like aromatase inhibitor or tamoxifen or disease progression. And in combination, it's indicated and approved with, uh, also with a CDK4 inhibitor for the treatment also this kind of patients, uh, HER2 negative locally advanced uh, metastatic breast cancer, and in, in, premenop in premenopausal or perimenopausal patients, the combination treatment with CDK forces inhibitor should be combined with a LHRH agonist. So in summary, follow strand single agent, could also fever in low risk patients with very limited, but only and non visceral disease. Maybe an important choice for patients with comorbidities and for those unable to tolerate combination targeted therapy. For example, with uh, cyclists that eventually have a higher, higher rate of suppression or a situation where target therapies are not uh, available or very expensive. And for the second line setting, non steroidal low aromatase inhibitors and examistain and fulvestran pro proved to be equally effective. The use of fulvestran as monotherapy in second line treatment is supported by the evidence provided by the aforementioned and confirmed study. And this trial has shown benefits both in PFS and even a small benefit in overall survival in, in patients that previously have received tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitors. 
Just a word about CDK4 inhibitors because uh, it's the fashion now. <laughs> and Fulvestron received an indication in 2016 in America and in one year later in Europe in combination with palbocycline and uh, CDK4 inhibitors. And last year with abemocycline and also with ribocycline, another uh, combination CDK4-6 inhibitors. Uh, this trial demonstrated a double OPVS with a combination in, in patients with previous exposure to AS, but until moment uh, with palbocycline, there is no survival benefit. There is a small survival benefit uh, with ribocycline uh, and with um, abemocycline. Uh, but in contrast, toxicity in, uh, are very important and with the grade three and four neutropenia in a significant number of patients. And so uh, this treatment, ha one has to be captured with this treatment because the statistical benefit mm, is not always a, a, a benefit uh, from a practical point of view. Uh, there is even trial now with her in HER2 positive, hormone positive, uh, ER positive breast cancer with another uh, new drugs like tucatinib, for, for example, but uh, are, are, these trials are still in progress. Uh, as I said before, in, in premenopausal patients, uh, uh, LH, RH agonist uh, is mandatory. So in conclusion, this uh, the fulvestrin is uh, uh, has a unique mode option. It's uh, an active com compound presented 20 years ago, but that is still is very important. It has shown increased efficacy in these years for the treatment of these patients uh, with uh, HR positive and HER2 negative patients alone or in combination with other endocrine. Uh, agents and now with target therapies. Uh, the recommended dose now is 500 milligrams with a loaded schedule. Most people do a loading schedule just one in the in the first month, and maybe consider with the LH uh, RH agonist for premenopausal patients. Mm. The truth is a very good alternative uh, for patients with need a well tolerated uh, therapy. And a, and a potential advantage of Fulvestron, uh, and not a minor one, is that it may improve treatment compliance due to the only parenteral administration with, compared with uh, daily oral intakes of other endocrine therapies. In, in my view, that, uh, that is very important. And also it's quite important the son of this uh, um, fulvestrin that can, don't need a refrigerator, refrigerator for, for conservation. Uh, because compliance, especially in rural areas, and, uh, is, is, very, is, is a very important issue for, for the, of course, for the fixed of it. So I think uh, we are still in front of a, a very go, good drug, and, and as I would say that is the, the standard of, of treatment for this kind of ER patients. And so, uh, the new one, uh, we have any, um, uh, we must, um, any question with any question about the Fulverson start, uh, the yeah, positive breast cancer and its role will, uh, will come to ask, uh, his or her questions. Uh, you can see that oh. Alina Fisa, Alina Fisa has raised her hand. Well, I, 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 I could, I, I could not hear. I could, the, the very, very low, the very low women. Could, could you please repeat? Uh, can you hear me now, Dr. Manuel? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the thank. Uh, I we have uh, thanked you for the nice presentation. You have thank you. Uh, shared your knowledge. Now we are going to question and answer session. And, okay. Uh, one of our participants has questions to you. 
I am uh, requesting Dr. Ali Nafli sir to ask her questions. Uh, I think Shajal, somebody have to turn on his uh, 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 because uh, attendance. Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, can I ask Dr. Uh, Arifuraman Shajal to say, uh, say something about the uh, uh, presentation and you, if you have any question? Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Shumi, for. Dr. Manuel, thank you for uh, joining us today uh, in the occasion of the World Lung Cancer Day. And uh, uh, we are gratitude uh, that uh, from the on behalf of the Society for Breast Cancer Study, I'm working as an organizing secretary. And uh, I really thank once again for this uh, wonderful uh, speech. Uh, to be honest, uh, in Bangladesh, progesterone is very much uh, a recent molecule and uh, all the generics are available now. So it is very accessible to our patients. Still, uh, the price is too high. And uh, sometimes you have shown some of the data that uh, we must more happy uh, in case of uh, rather than uh, uh, conjugation or other CDK4-6 inhibitor, Western works uh, better than uh, some CDK4-6 inhibitor. We have all the molecules now and uh, we are very fortunate to use our patients, but uh, the main uh, issues is the, the cost. And uh, we are uh, trying to make this flow, uh, gap uh, to uh, uh, for the better, better outcome. Uh, uh, according to our uh, World Lung Cancer, sorry, World Cancer Day 2022. So we can access a lot of uh, patients with this uh, molecules so that we can help our patients. Thank you for your nice presentation once again. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arifur Raman Shajul for the um, sum up and the, uh, sharing the scenario in case of, in Bangladesh. And now I will uh, ask, uh, request Dr. Uh, if, um, Anwar Hussain sir to say something about uh, this presentation and his experience regarding the PR positive breast cancer. Uh, Dr. AFM Anwar Hussain is senior consultant of Asanya Mission Cancer Hospital. Cancer Hospital. Sir, are you there? Yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sumi for asking me to say a few words. Uh, a lot of thanks to organizer, specifically Professor Kamu Jaman Choudhury for arranging this program uh, in today, World Cancer Day, 4th February. So uh, though it is our association's program, still then, first of all, I would like to give thanks to Dr. Manuel for elaborating discussion regarding the hormonal therapy in hormone receptor positive and heart to negative breast cancer cases in both in locally advanced and also in metastatic setting. Uh, and because there are no other questions, actually uh, I want to know in locally advanced cases, if chemotherapy not given, only full breast strain can be given and following which uh, there is, is there is any scope of breast conserving surgery without chemotherapy? This is, uh, though, uh, this is my <coughs> question, but I want to know something from Dr. Manuel, whether he has got any experience of using this hormonal therapy only without any chemotherapy in locally advanced breast cancer cases, and following which, what has happened and what are the outcome in those cases. And in true sense, uh, we have no experience. We are mostly using, um, I, I am though surgical oncologist, but our oncologist usually uh, given the chemotherapeutic agents in locally advanced cases. Uh, and subsequently in hormone receptor positive cases, they have received usually hormone therapy either tamoxifen or anastrozol, depending upon the age of the patient. So a lot of thanks to Dr. Manuel for your valuable presentation and uh, good discussion. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dr. Manuel. Ji. Yeah, uh, we use uh, fulbestron as uh, only agent in locally advanced cases, especially with Two, two kind of patients, elderly patients, that is sometimes we see patients over 80 years old or, 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 even, or even more, 
and also with frail patients that has another comorbidities and other and a good option in, uh, when we have to to give uh, because sometimes mm, or hormone therapy it is true that you have to wait some time until you, you see the effect for example two months or so no? and we need uh, chemotherapy first the chemotherapy is sometimes it's quite complicated for this kind of patients. Uh, one uh, option we favor in this case is capecitamine. Capecitamine, capecitamine is a, a normal drug, it's a not expensive drug and, it's a, and offers a good option. And then uh, or with the uh, Folbexan, for example. Thank you. Uh, can, can I uh, or can make one question to uh, Professor Manuel, especially uh, regarding the, especially the uh, bone mass and visceral mass, uh, you usually prefer to use hormonal manipulations like full Western acidic inhibitors, especially in bone mass, not in the visceral uh, mass, especially liver and other things. So uh, always your choice is uh, to start CDKs and full Western bone mass. But in the case of uh, small liver mats or uh, there is no visceral crisis, you, you go for the chemotherapies or you also use the uh, CDK inhibitors or full western in that case. So that is a hormonal manipulation. So what is experience? Uh, you know, at the moment in, the, in this last three years, we are under high pressure from the pharmaceutical industry to use CDK4-6 inhibitors. And... And they are talking every day that you have to begin with uh, all this drug. But in practice, uh, it, it is true that hormones or hormone therapy with a good or hormone therapy like fluvestrin or even aromatase inhibitors, you can give good, you can see good results, especially if the the visceral disease is not compromising at the moment uh, the the situation. No? So we are quite disappointed, for example, with palpocyclic. And I can tell you that I have several patients that after, but they have presented, for example, now a trial in, in last December in San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium in America about the, the patient progress after parvocyclic then uh, anastrozole or aromatase inhibitor, you can gain benefit if you give them parvocyclic and fulvestran. Yeah, the truth. But maybe with fulvestran alone, you gain the same benefit. And and we have some patients in this in this case that just uh, after progressing to palpocyclic uh, aromatase inhibitor just with fulvestran to get another uh, a response, both a biochemical response uh, when you measure CA uh, 15.3 or or even um, or symptomatic for the patient because bone disease is quite difficult to to measure uh, yeah, you know so. Um, I think hormone therapy, if the, if the disease is not progressing, uh, is a very is a very good option. There are um, countries uh, that favor more chemotherapy. That is Italy and Spain. And there are other countries, for example, in Germany, in other countries in Europe, or, 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 or Austria, there are more uh, with uh, hormone therapy. But the truth, I, I, I think, is. To, to, to have the, the chemotherapy as a second option. And we have also to see the convenience where the patient, the patient lives, if they go to the hospital, as you said before, or no, if it has a long distance or not. Uh, the cost is also very important. Uh, the cyclists um, are very expensive. And well, they call the cyclists, but this uh, is, is just a way, uh, a form of chemotherapy. So, I will be very. I, I, I have a word of caution regarding the cyclists. I would say, uh, still there are still very, very good drugs in breast cancer when you are dealing with chemo, uh, with chemotherapy. Uh, from our experience, uh, especially in uh, one or two cases, 
uh, I, we have seen that patients we are when we are using the CDK four inhibitors along with the full fulvasterone, patient is progressed in especially the liver cases and patient has a um, um, the liver function was deteriorated where the serum uh, alkaline phosphate is bilirubin is very high. In that case, patients failed to have received the chemotherapy. In that case, patients and other things and we are also thinking if we start the chemotherapy, patient can have used this uh, this weapon first before going for the hormone therapy. Because after hormone therapy, when the patient got a high bilirubin wins, we cannot provide anything like uh, we put, put the patient into supportive care. That is uh, uh, one thing uh, always reminds me actually in some cases, especially also in one cases, which my uh, classmate, she was a doctor's uh, pediatrician. She died, especially when we use the CDK4 inhibitors along with the uh, uh, full breast and others, uh, especially uh, it was prescribed from a neighboring country, especially along with me also. But thing is that we found that the CDK4 inhibitors along with a, a full best turn patient progress, we cannot offer him chemotherapies in the last time of the disease, especially. So that is my opinion, whether, whether what you do actually in your cases. The case with the 4, 6, uh, first are not the same. It's not the same palbocycle that abemocycline, for example, because... And at the end, uh, palbocycline uh, could not show survival, and most of the trials with palbocyclines uh, are negative at the moment. Uh, that's not the case with the ribocycline, uh, and especially with uh, abemocycline, that you can give, even give us a, a, a single drug, not with hormone therapy or so. So the first to, 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 to be, to be that we have to say that maybe are not the same, maybe not, are not the same every, every, every CDK force. But um, at the end, uh, CDK46 uh, are just chemotherapy, are a way of a form of chemotherapy. So they say, uh, CD, well, this is not chemotherapy, it's CD46 inhibitors. Well, this is a way of talking uh, from a marketing point of view, but uh, it's, it's, it's a way of chemotherapy. No? And when you, two years ago, has been presented, for example, in San, in San Tony Breast Cancer uh, Symposium, in, uh, a trial comparing palbocycline and capacitivine, it has been negative for palbocycline. So it, 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 was, it, it was not superior. So, so uh, we still, the, the chemotherapy, we still have a very good drugs in chemotherapy, like capecetamine, like uh, anthracyclines and, and all other drugs that, that we know. That's, that's good. Uh, if you have it, uh, all the drugs, like uh, pavlocyclip, abemocyclip, and ravocyclip, which one you will choose, especially in your cases? Uh, at the moment, uh, we, we favor abemocyclip. Uh, in, in, at the beginning, we would only use um, palbocyclid in, because during for, for two years was the only drug that there was uh, reimbursed. And that's an important issue because a very expensive drug, if it is not reimbursed, but that's, that's, you cannot use it. So the first drug we used for two years was uh, palbocyclid. Now we, we all are reimbursed and we can choose and uh, we choose. We, we try to favor abemocycline at the moment, but aware of caution, the house has a problem that is diarrhea that could be very important. So we have to see also the convenience, the cost, where the patient lives, uh, and a number of... Uh, or, or, yeah, that's good. Uh, in old patients, uh, yeah, in day-to-day -day practice, we are uh, having these patients with a palbocycline. Patients are having a... a lower level of the WC counts, counts is going down. So we'll have to stop for one tweaks. So sometimes we feel whether the patient may progress or may fail with this hormonal manipulation. What do you experience in that cases? Uh, pardon, I, 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 I could not hear a moment. So you're... In patients, elderly patients who are getting palbociclip yeah. along with the uh, full besterone yeah. or even cut palbociclip singly, we are, see, we are uh, in, 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 especially in, couple of weeks, we see the patients have a low level of the WC count. WC count is going down from the normal ranges. So we mm -hmm. have to stop for a week, one or two weeks. So we uh, always think patient may 
uh, relapse especially or patient may progress because we have to wait for this uh, normalization of the WC counts. So do, do you feel this type of thing in your hospital practice, day-to-day -day practice? Uh, with palpocyclines, the most common thing is that you have to delay the treatments every month mm. because the toxicity mm. is very important. And yeah. I, I, I can tell you that I have a number of patients with 75 milligrams instead of 525. That, mm. it, it, the truth uh, is that no more, nobody use now 125 milligrams. They start with 100 and, then, and a number of patients and have just 75. And even with 75, you have some time to delay the treatment. Uh, with abemacycline, you give the treatment every day. You don't have to, to, maybe this is a reason for a more efficacy. Maybe the drug, it is clear that the drug is different. But also the, the the toxicity with the rear the diarrhea is could be very important in some patients. They say that it happens only in the first month, the two months. But uh, well, you have to see the patient in front of you and see where the patient lives, how the, the age, how comorbidities. Well, as you know, it's not it's not uh, just uh, one one size uh, fits all. That's good. Thank you. Uh, discussion, and we got many things uh, uh, from this discussion. One of our uh, participants has a question, Dr. Mohammad Nasiruddin has a question. Palbocilib uh, uh, mostly produces neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. How can we compensate that? Oh, the only way to compensate this is just to give less ribocycline. That is, instead of 100 milligrams, you give 20, uh, 75 milligrams. And you have to, uh, instead of wait one week, you have to wait two weeks. Or that's, that's the only way. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, now, uh, in this state, I want to uh, request Dr. Selim Reza, sir. Uh, to uh, say the vote of thanks on behalf of Bangladesh Society for Breast Cancer Study. Uh, uh, he is also a senior oncologist of um, Square Hospital. Uh, sir, are you there? Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Shalami. Shumi, uh, hear, hear me? Yes, sir. You are here. Yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Shalami. Uh, uh, this is the uh, winner. Uh, uh, for the observation of the uh, World Cancer Day before February. Uh, Dr. Onangsho, already our general secretary mentioned that, that this year, the theme of the uh, um, World Cancer Day is uh, close the care, care gap. So close the care gap means the gap definitely in between the healthcare providers, that is the gap between the uh, surgical oncologist, even medical oncologist, radiation oncologist, uh, diagnosis, that is uh, radiologist, even histopathologist. So there should be minimized the gap between these uh, specialities and also gap between the uh, healthcare providers with the uh, in general physicians, uh, general physicians also. And also there is our knowledge gap. To overcome this knowledge gap, so this, our society, society of professional study, organizes so many sem seminar, seminar, webinar to minimize this gap. For this purpose, this uh, day to, or, to observe the day, we organize this uh, session. Thanks our keynote speaker, Dr. Emmanuel from Spain uh, for uh, uh, delivering the excellent, excellent, excellent presentations regarding the uh, uh, ER positive breast cancer patients. So thanks uh, all the uh, all the panel members, uh, our society presidents, Professor Kamal Choudhury and Dr. F. Anar Hussain, our surgical oncologist, and all all the um, uh, participants again, and, and also I offer my thanks to the uh, sponsoring uh, uh, authority that is um, JAS and uh, Eva Pharma. Uh, for our uh, for for a partnership to organize these programs, so thank you all, and you you happy life. Thank you all. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. And uh, we must thank Jess and Evo Pharma for uh, be, uh, being the, as a scientific partner in this symposium. Uh, and uh, to conclude, I must request Professor Mohamed Kamrud Jaman Chodhuri, sir, to say uh, something and to conclude the symposium, please. Uh, first of all, I will uh, uh, say thanks to uh, Dr. Manuel, because it is an excellent presentation. We got some new information how to manipulate the hormonal manipulation, especially in the advanced case of ER positive breast cancer. We got your experience or your, your knowledge. You share your knowledge. Definitely our seniors and juniors and residents can practice this in our country. Uh, this is a very knowledge sharing uh, lectures. I think, I think we benefited from this lectures. And we hope that in coming years you will be with us, and we will uh, definitely we will uh, provide a lot of lectures, series of lectures to our residents to our society. So, and also we welcome you to Bangladesh because uh, this years, if there is a COVID situation goes away, we, we will have a uh, not virtual, we will have a con international conference. Okay. This year we'll try, and we'll invite you if if you can provide us some uh, days or times here in Bangladesh. So thank you all. Thank, thanks for well uh, presentations and thanks to all the participants. Thanks to uh, the Just Oncology and even farmers. Thank you all. Thank you. It has really been real my pleasure to talk to colleagues from other countries. I'm, uh, I've never been in Bangladesh. Uh, yeah, you yeah, should, should come <laughs> to Bangladesh. <laughs> the, most, the most close that, that I have been is in Vietnam. There's, from from the perspective from here is closed, from there is not. Yeah, so, yeah, also. because <laughs> we have gone a lot of times to Spain, especially in the Barcelona in conference, especially the S ones and others and Astro, Astro also. But uh, uh, definitely you should come to Bangladesh to see uh, how we are working here and you can share <laughs> your knowledge. You can train our people also. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. A real pleasure.